This is lesson 34 and we'll be talking about sharps and flats. In musical terms, pitch refers to how high or low we perceive a tone to be. There are two basic types of sound waves, random waves and uniform waves. We perceive random waves as indefinite pitches or noise, and we perceive uniform waves as definite pitches or musical tones. In Western music, we refer to specific uniform waves or musical tones by letter names. We learn that the musical alphabet consists of just seven basic letter names, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We just continue to repeat that. If we are ascending or getting higher in pitch, we go through that alphabet forwards, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If we're descending or getting lower in pitch, we go through that alphabet backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. The composer represents specific musical pitches on the staff by placing note heads on and above and below the musical staff. So a note placed on space one will have a different pitch or musical tone than a note placed on, say, space four, provided they're both written in the same musical clef. Returning to J. Albrecht's Ready to Read Music, we're on unit three, which is our pitch unit, lesson five, sharp and flat. Sometimes you will see a musical symbol before a note on the staff, like this, or like this, this musical symbol is called a sharp. A sharp means that the note should be played or sung just a little bit higher. Music readers call that little bit a half step. This musical symbol is called a flat. A flat means that the note should be played or sung just a little bit lower. Music readers call that little bit a half step. Let's look at some examples. So it says this note is a C. So we're in the bass or F clef in this example. Remember that these points here on the bass or F clef help us to know that line four is a really important spot. If we put a note head there, it would be an F. And that's why we call it the F clef. From there, we can decode all the other letter names. So if the note on line four is an F, we would climb backwards or descend through our musical alphabet to figure out what this note here is. So here's our F and then E, D, C. This note here is a C sharp. It is sung or played a little bit higher, a half step higher than a C. So you'll note that we write C sharp, but when we write it on the staff, we actually write the sharp and then the note head. This note is an E, and let's figure out why. So we're in the treble or G clef. Remember that this curly Q action around line two helps us remember that line two is an important spot. This would be a G, hence the term G clef. From there, we can decode all the other letter names. So in this case, we're gonna climb up through the musical alphabet. After G, we go back to A, B, C, D, and that's why this note here is an E. This note is an E flat. It is sung or played a little bit lower, a half step lower than an E. So notice again, when we write it in English, we write it E and then the flat sign following it, E flat. But when we write it in musical notation, we write the flat sign right before the note head. Here's how to draw a sharp. So we put two lines going down and you notice they're just a little bit offset. So the second one's just one hair higher. And then we slant these lines just a little bit this way. So it really is like a sloped tic-tac-toe basically. <laughs> when a sharp is placed on a staff line, it looks like this. So just like our note head always went right over the line when it's a line note, so will our sharp sign. So our sharp sign will always go right over top so at the middle of the tic-tac-toe is right over top of that line. When a sharp is placed in a staff space, it looks like this. So just like with our note heads, when we made sure that our space notes were right between two lines, that's what we'll do with our sharp as well. The tic-tac-toe center 
will go right in that space. Here's how to draw a flat. So we just draw a line down, a line down, and then basically almost like a pointed slopey B, lowercase b. When a flat is placed on a staff line, it looks like this. So again, if it's on the line, we want to make sure that the little open bubble is right on top of the line, just like our note head would be right on top of the line. When a flat is placed in a staff space, it looks like this. And again, the open bubble is right in that space, just like our note head would be right in that space. Practice drawing sharps by drawing a sharp on the line or in the space shown below. So this first one is done for us on the second line. And you know, ideally, it's a little bit sloped like this. Sometimes it's not going to be perfect when you're drawing by hand. Don't worry about it. On the fifth line, we count from the bottom to the top. One, two, three, four, five. In the third space, one, two, three. So I'm trying to make sure that center of the tic-tac-toe is right in space three. On the second line, one, two. That was pretty imperfect, it's okay. And then in the third space, one, two, three. We're trying to always make sure that when it's a line sharp, we have that center of the tic-tac-toe pretty much right over top of that line. And when it's a space sharp, that we have the center of that tic-tac-toe right inside the space. If we were to draw note heads, that went with these sharps, <laughs> which is usually how we'd see them, of course, in the music, then we would draw the note head right after. So this would actually be a G sharp. This would be an F sharp. C sharp. Another G sharp. And this would be a C sharp. Practice drawing flats by drawing a flat on the line or in the space shown below. So our first one's done for us. In the second space, so we have a line going down, and then the bubble of this little sloped B, the almost a teardrop, is right inside space two. On the third line, we count from the bottom to the top, one, two, three, and our bubble is right over line three. In the fourth space, one, two, three, four, so the bubble is right here in space four. And then on the fourth line, one, two, three, four, and the bubble's right here on line four. And then on the first line, so the bubble's right here, right over top of the first line. Name the following notes in the treble clef. Treble or G clef, the curly cue action reminds us that line two is our important spot. Any note placed there will be a G, and from there we can decode all the other letter names that are on and above and below the staff. Our very first note is a G, because it's on line two. And we see a sharp. We're gonna write G sharp. For the next note, we need to climb up the musical alphabet. So G, A, B, C. This will be a C, and it'll be a C sharp. When we're writing it out with a letter name, we put the sharp after the letter. And we need to go back down. So let's start on our G again. We'll go backwards through the musical alphabet. F, E, D, and so this will be a D flat. Remember that D flat will be a half step lower, so just slightly lower than a regular D. The flat lowers the note by a half step. Starting at our G again, let's climb up a B, and this is a B flat, so this B flat would be a half step lower than our B. We have a ledger line above the staff, so let's keep going. We're going to go C, D, E, F, G, and our first ledger line will be an A flat. Name the following notes in the bass clef. So remember, this is the bass or F clef. These dots here indicate that line four is a very important spot. Any note placed there will be an F. From there, we can decode all the other letter names. So first of all, we're going to climb up F, G, A. This will be an A flat. We're going to descend through our musical alphabet now, starting at F again. E, D, C, B, A. And this will be an A 
flat. Notice these two A's are one octave apart. So there are eight letter names between those two notes. Next, we have a ledger line above the staff again. We have our F right here on line four. Let's climb up through the musical alphabet again. G, A, B, and we're on a C. So we have a C sharp. This C sharp will be a half step higher, so just a little bit higher than a C, a normal C. Now we have a ledger line below the staff, so we're skipping down, starting again at our F, and let's go backwards through the musical alphabet. We'll descend E, D, C, B, A, G, F, and then E flat. Starting again at our F, we're going to descend just a little bit through our musical alphabet, E, D, and this will be a D sharp. This D sharp will be a half step higher, just a little bit higher than our regular D. Circle the note, which is higher. And we're in the bass or F clef, so this is our F, descending through the musical alphabet, E, D, C. This is a C. This is a C sharp. Sharps raise pitches by half a step, so this will be our higher note. Circle the note, which is lower. We're in the G clef. So we know this is a G, we ascend through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and this will be our A. So this is our A, that means this is our A flat. Remember that flats lower a pitch by half a step. So in this case, our A flat will be our lower pitch. Using quarter notes, write the following notes in the treble clef. There will be more than one correct answer. Here's our G, we're gonna climb up A, B. Here's our B, we're supposed to write quarter notes so we fill in our note head, draw a stem going down and on the left, and I'm gonna draw my flat sign just before the note head. And then we're gonna actually write a G, so we'll be right on line two. Stem will go up and on the right because we're below line three, and we need a sharp in front of that. So here's our sharp sign. And now we need a D. Let's go up. So we're going to start on G, A, B, C, D. Here's our D on line four. Stem goes down on the left. Then we just put our flat symbol right in front of that D. This will be a half step lower in pitch than a regular old D. We can keep climbing up now. Let's go to E, F. Here's our F. And we'll put a stem going down and on the left. And our sharp will go just in front of that note. So this F sharp will be a half step higher in pitch than our regular F. And then let's climb back down from there. So we were on F, E, D, C. Here's our C. And we're going to put our stem going down on the left. And we're going to put our sharp in front of that. So this C will be a half step higher than our regular C. Using half notes, write the following notes in the bass clef. There will be more than one correct answer. So we're in the bass or F clef. That means that line four will be our F. Let's climb down. So we'll go F, E, D, C, B, A. I'm gonna put a half note here. So I'm gonna need to do an open note head with a stem going up and on the right. I could have also gone up F, G, A and put a note head right here. And that note would have been an A sharp. That would have been one octave higher than the lower A sharp I wrote here. D sharp is next, so F backwards through the alphabet, descending E, D. Open note head, stem going down and on the left, and our sharp will go in front of the note on the staff. Next is a G flat. We're gonna start on our F again and just climb up to the next space for the next letter name, and this will be our G. Stem goes down and on the left, because we're above line three, and then our flat goes right in front of that note head. So this is a G flat, a half step lower in pitch than a regular G. Let's start on our F again and descend to the very next space note, to the next letter name. So here's our E, and we're gonna put a flat in front of that. And then lastly, a C. So starting on our F, descending through the musical alphabet, E, D, C. Here's a C we can use. Stem goes up and on the right because it's below line three. And then our sharp goes right in front of that. This C sharp would be a half step higher in pitch than a regular C. 